everybody. I thought that today, given that you all know how I love the beachy themes, that I have these mosaic um, glass assortment of tiles. And they've been sitting on my shelf with all my crystals and glass beads for so long. I thought I am going to make a beach out of these. So what I'm going to do first is, let me get my gloves on. Oh, I think my hands are sweaty. I've been working around the house. I am going to move these out the way. I'm going to make two sets because it's just as easy to make two as it is one. I have some nice gritty grainy sand here. And the reason I want a kind of coarser sand is because once these are cut, this is covered with resin, I want you to be able to see the granular aspect of the sand. So that, and then you take your Elmer's glue all, Elmer's glue all, you add that to the sand. I could get the lid off. Oh, this glue's glued all its lid down. There we go. All right. So I'm going to do it little by little. Sit down for the stirring. and mix it all in. So I'm going to lay a thin layer of the sand mixture. There we go. You can see the consistency. It's, it's kind of thick and sculptural. But don't be deceived, it will still move around. So I got to decide, let me use these ones first. These are different than these. These feel a little sturdier and thicker. So I have to decide where I want my beach and where I want my ocean. And just until the sand is drying, I am going to put some tape down where I want my beach to finish. So I think I'm going to do like just over one third. Okay, I've got my sand mixture. I've masked off this. You don't have to be too precise about this. Basically, it's like you see this, the sand has settled a little bit. I just want it to be able to dry before it starts creeping over into the ocean territory. And I only want like a little thin, thin coat of sand. So you don't want to watch me doing the whole thing. I'll do one and then I will pause the video and come back when I've done all the others. See it's settling and actually, you know, it's almost easier to push it down with your finger because I want it thin. Now, some people, when they are using sand in coasters, they add, they just pour the um, resin on top of the sand. And the reason I don't want to do that is because it makes the sand go dark. And I want this to be like a really kind of nice tropical beach. All right, 
So now that has done. Where is my kitchen towel? I actually had a tidy up of my studio today and now everything is away and I can't find it. I'm too tidy. So I've got my little starfish. So I would decorate these. I'm going to decorate them all slightly differently. So I've got starfish and I have some little adorable shells and these need to go in before the sand has dried. So I've put all the sand down and decorated them and I had to make sure that I used really tiny little shells because I need the resin to cover them. The starfish's leg is kind of poking up a bit. There we go. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait for them to dry a little bit and not completely because I've got a feeling if I pull up the tape before they've dried, all the sand's going to come off. So this one was the first one I did. I'm going to take the tape off this one now, just carefully. And then that sand is going to relax and I can just put it, poke it down with my finger a little bit. And which other one? This one looks like it's drying up. Yep. Now that all needs to be done is, I want that one by the, by the beach, because it's a bit like surf, is to fit all the tiles in. Um, when this is going to take a long time. Now, I'm not going to be too particular about where I want what certain colours, because generally, like if you look at these, they look very beachy and oceany anyway. So I'm just going to have them random um, and fill this up. I mean, I say random, I don't really want two the same next to each other, I guess, but um, you can use my tweezers, make it much easier. So there's the first one done. And I am not going to time lapse the rest. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the mosaic tiles on all the others. And then when, the sand is completely dry, dry, we will come back and resin. It has been absolutely gorgeous here today. I played tennis this morning, the sun was shining, it was warm. And now, torrential downpour, all the leaves are flying off the trees. So the resin I've mixed, it's one-to-one -one resin and I am using this new resin called Naked Fusion, the artist's resin. And I used it once before on my um, kind of multi-dimensional beach paintings and I absolutely love it. And it really, really is crystal clear. And they, when you order it, you get this kind of like instruction thing. And it's, it's nice to see some different advice. So they give a tip, do not add more hardener than resin because it will cause the finished coating to remain tacky. Tip, add 0.05% more resin than hardener for a harder cure, cured finish. Um, it has a work time of approximately 45 minutes. You can recoat within six to eight hours, cures in 24 hours and reaches maximum hardness in 72 hours. So I have mixed, I did my little mosaics of my ocean, which is super cute. And the sand is pretty much hard. It's not gonna resin, because it was glue in there, not water this is going to be just fine. So I am going to pour the resin over each one. 
It's gonna let that kind of do its thing for a bit. Let it spread. And also it is self-doming. I don't want my tiles to oh, shift around. No, stay. This looks so pretty. And I mixed up, so I've got six tiles. I do want them quite deep. And if necessary, I will do another coat of the resin because I want them nice and thick. It's been a while since I made coasters and I'm loving these. You know, there was a fad of making those Petri coasters, which is really, really, really pretty. I just thought I'd try something different. And whenever you heat resin, it becomes more fluid. I'm sure most of you know that. And if I'm teaching you old tricks, then feel free to fast forward. And I suspect I'm gonna to have to do getting rid of the bubbles quite a lot because air is getting gonna get trapped under the mosaic tiles. Okay, I'm gonna add some more to this one. See if I fill it up too much, it's gonna dome nicely. I can already see that one doming. All right, I'm gonna babysit those for a while and then we will come back tomorrow morning and demold. Hi everybody, welcome back. So this morning I had a sneak peek at one of them and, and then I had a tennis match, which I lost but only just lost in the tie break. And so I had a sneak peek at one and the sand was still damp on the back from the glue. I guess it couldn't breathe by being in this silicone mold. So I'm going to take the others out. I'm actually gonna lie that, that way because I don't want to risk anything with that one. Um, yeah, so that's still kind of sticky. I guess the glue couldn't breathe. I'm gonna take the others off. And what I'm gonna to have to do is a layer of resin on the back. Yeah, this one's the same, which is fine. I just don't wanna pull all the sand off. So we've got them out of the mould and a couple of them did tear, but that's okay. Um, it's because I filled them so high, but I wanted them thick. I'm now going to demonstrate how you tidy up the edges if you've got any flashing. So you can see on this one, let me see, here there's some flashing around the edges. That's... This side is okay, it's just around this corner. So the way you tackle that, let me just adjust the camera, because I'm gonna do it away from the others, is you take your um, X-Acto knife and you heat up the blade till it glows red. And keep your finger away from the blade, because I have burnt myself before and then you just take your knife down the side tidy up that and do that again and there's some here
Right. So what I'm going to do now, okay, they're all nice and tidy. I am going to wait until the sand is completely dry. Then I'm going to mask off the front and do a coat of resin on the back of these. Um, and then, depending on how that looks, I may then tape off the back and sand these down. Oh, they do look pretty good. I noticed one had a little air bubble. Anyway, I'll see what they look like once the back has been resined. So and as soon as those are dry, I will come back and we will get them finished. The sand is completely dry. I can hear Penny growling in the background. Do not bark, please, Miss Penny. So while it was drying, I left it for a few hours. I decided to paint some birds on this resin painting and put matte varnish over the sky. And this one too. So those are on my Etsy store, resined and varnished. These I have um, masked. This is the front. So I'm, I'm going to resin the back because I've got to seal the sand. So I masked the front. I've made sure each one is level. Which is very important. Just a reminder. And oh, the other thing I did was um, I couldn't sign the back because you can see, you know, the sort of see-through. So I picked a little tile here on each one and just put my initials JM. And for some reason, this one was slightly off. Now I've mixed up six ounces, which is probably far too much, but I don't want to run out. I'm going to put it in the middle, let it run over. And I have decided I'm going to do a second coat on the front. There was one that had a little bit of a flaw in it and um, I would have had to sand that one and resin. So I'm going to, when this is dry, sand the front of them and to give, you know, clear any imperfections, but I only saw one. And then put a very, very thin coat on the front. So I'm just going to spread this out. Don't move. I sanded the back, the front of them, and chipped off all the little nobbles. I am going to put them on little cups. I've already got my resin mixed. But I did want to show you, I've, I've got one more to mask off. And I wanted to show you something that's kind of cool. So let me bring it up to you. So what I did was I did decide to decide to sign the back of it. And then I put a really thin coat of resin on that. So that's never coming off. And it's so interesting if you can see the sides and you can see through. So right now you're thinking these are never, ever going to look shiny again but you're wrong they are we're gonna mask the back of this one quickly i have this new tape that i'm trying out which is um it's an exterior tape from scotch so it's kind of plastic anyway i thought i would try this out my scissors i'm gonna trim the bits off in a minute because sometimes, I don't know, I tend, when I'm using the blue tape, 
I get the one that is um, extra sharp lines because I think it's stickier. Uh, but this is plastic. So really hoping this works. I had a bit of a disaster with electrical tape. I thought electrical tape might do the trick and oh my goodness, what a mess. I had to sand it off in the end. It did not come off. It kind of got swallowed up by the resin, probably because it's too thin and too narrow. So this should be fine. Let's have two more pieces. One here, and one here. I'm just making sure that I press all the sides down. And I'm not too worried if the sides are super duper smooth because it's, you know, it's, it's beachy. So a little bit of rustic is fine by me. All right, so my resin's mixed. There's details for this are below this video in the description box. And I am just going to apply. I've mixed six ounces of resin. And interesting, with KS resin in the leaflet that comes with it, they say if you mix just a teeny weeny bit more resin than hardener, you're going to get a much harder surface. So I did 3.0 fluid ounces of epoxy resin and 2.8 ounces of the hardener. Because these are the coasters, I need it to be very hard. Okay, getting one of my silicone spatulas. Yeah, these took a good sanding. And see, look, they come back to life. The minute the resin's on. And I would always recommend sanding your layer of resin because... Um, you it gives it gives you like a, a two three kind of gripping surface for your final layer okay i'm gonna go around all six tiles I'm sure you don't want to watch me doing that and then we will come back tomorrow when they are finished Okay, they came out. They are absolutely flawless. There is not one air bubble in them at all. And I have put on these little uh, plastic feet. I don't know what they're made of. Kind of bendy. Maybe they're, maybe they're silicone. Anyway, I've put those on the back. As you can see. And if I hold this up to the light, you can see that they are transparent when they're up like this. And they have all the details, the little shells and the sand dollars and the starfish. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.